Good morning and welcome to Pathways to Parenting Family Podcast with Julie Johnson. Today's podcast is my last one. It seems like only yesterday we began the series hoping to support parents and families in this time of COVID-19. The last two days we've talked about teens and the impact of the lockdown on their lives. If you missed these you might like to listen in. Both days are still available on the website www.cofight19.com. 19 days ago, we began these podcasts laying the foundations of caring for and supporting your families by reminding ourselves of the oxygen mask principle. Remembering that we as parents cannot pour from a half-empty cup. Well, how's that self-care going? Maybe this is a good time to check back in. As we journey into week five, with at least three more weeks ahead, let's pause, take stock and do a family review. What areas might be worth reviewing? Well, on day five... We looked at the scaffolding of our lives, the importance of a daily structure. How's that going? Is it too rigid, too loose? What do people find helpful or not too helpful? Teens may need a bit more flexibility within reason, empowering them with a sense of autonomy. But with key non-negotiables such as family meals, they're not necessarily breakfast. And with schools now being back, the school timetable of itself will bring a new structure to the day. Try to differentiate between week and weekends or bringing small differences between each day of the week. For instance, games night, film night, an evening takeaway, maybe different people cooking, not just the parents, doing a camping out night if you're lucky enough to have a garden. Consider one day a week scheduling school in the morning then downing tools of a creative family activity in the afternoon. Different people can choose what to do each week, leading and organising the activities. On days 9 and 10, we looked at digital saviour versus digital overload. Well, having had several weeks with the invaluable support of the online world, sustaining work, keeping us up in touch with friends and family, remote schooling, we are eternally grateful for platforms such as Zoom, Google Meet, House Party, allowing those cups of coffee to happen with friends, drinks, meals, quiz nights, meetings with colleagues, team parties, so on and so on. I wonder, though, is anyone experiencing digital overload and exhaustion? Many people are finding that they need boundaries for both mental and physical well-being. So reviewing how the family digital contract is going is vital for everyone, not just the kids. Parents, remember what you're modelling. What about family rules and conflict? How's that going? Is everyone contributing as age appropriate to chores, cooking, taking responsibility generally? Remembering as and when, giving that bit more flexibility and maybe autonomy to the teens. But that does not mean they don't contribute, it's merely when in the day. The podcast on day 17 and 18 looked at conflict specifically alongside teenage years, which as we know is as inevitable as night turning into day. What is important is how we do conflict though. It might be helpful to check back in on those podcasts. With everyone living on top of each other, depending on the size of your home, things like access to a garden, living space, children or teens sharing a room, the need of privacy and space, or in this situation the lack of it, will cause fertile ground for conflict of fire. Tell me about it, I hear from all the introverts and in reality, many extroverts, which I count myself as one. Personal space and privacy is a core human need. Is there an agreement that when anyone needs time out, they can get it? Is there a place where parents, children or teens can go to wind down, read, chill out, or just take some time out from each other? This may also mean digital time out. Certainly at the end of each day, phones, tablets, all should be placed in one place downstairs. How about a digital free day or half day once a week? Teens might find this more challenging, not because they don't necessarily want to, but because of FOMO, fear of missing out, and that's not just the teens. It's too stressful, they may need and appreciate a parent saying to them, it's a digital day off. They can then tell their friends that you've said that, blame you, always a good option to give them. Having done the family lockdown review, what now? Well, how about thinking creatively? about making the best of the next few weeks, any new hobbies, individually as a family, a new project, but also beginning to reflect on and plan your own exit strategy. 
How do you as a family want to exit this time? Not only of the lockdown, but the experience of COVID-19. This has been and will for some time to come a difficult and challenging experience. Perhaps the loss of a loved one has occurred in this time, or previously ignored or buried family issues have risen to the surface. Mental health problems have arised, or existing ones having been exacerbated by the isolation. For some, none of the above will apply. It may have brought you closer together as a family, a deeper of appreciation of friends and family and of the importance of the simple things in life. Whatever may be true for you, you may like to consider reflecting on these past few weeks to give these experiences a sense of meaning and purpose, to journey forward as parents and families with a desire to forge a new way of living as a result of COVID-19. Victor Frankl, in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, where he shares his experience of surviving Auschwitz, talks about how everything can be taken from a man but one thing. The last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Or consider the power of the words from another Holocaust survivor, Alice Hirsch Sommer. When Alice is asked at the age of 108, what is the secret of her long and happy life? She replies, optimism, looking for the good. Life is beautiful. To be happy, to admire, to thank. Thankful that we are living. Wherever you look is beauty. I know about the bad things, but I look to the good. Well, these two human beings faced incredible horrors, but both came away bringing hope and meaning into their experiences. In that sense, taking back control and choice when it seemed that all had been taken away from them. So as we finish this journey through our days of COVID-19, may you stay safe and stay well.